We're looking forward to meeting the ministers, the Buter Svenska. Jag har sagt att jag skriver att som traditionen påbjuder bara med små undantag är också försvarsministrarna. And uh, we have uh, the ministers of defense from both Finland and Sweden. Uh, Mr. Antti Kaikkonen uh, is unfortunately unable to attend because he has been taken ill and he is going to be substituted by uh, another colleague uh, but uh, the Swedish uh, Minister of Defense Paul Jonsson uh, has been in his office for only a few weeks now uh, earlier he was um, member and um, chair of the Defence Committee in Sweden. We have also Esa Pulkinen, the um, State Secretary of the Ministry of Defence, and he has also been um, the uh, uh, head of the um, uh, one of the departments of the uh, mini Finnish Ministry of Defense. But Paul Jonsson, now the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in this event. Stefan, I need to correct you. I was, in fact, in the directorate of Hanating until I became the minister, but that was a duty that was very important for me. I've been here before, but I was not here as a minister of defense. This is my second trip abroad as a minister also the first trip uh, i made to helsinki which is an indication of our close cooperation uh, in defense matters i would like to say just a few words about our uh, cooperation our nato uh, membership applications and our contributions to the shared security the collective security if i would like to say first that Europe is facing one of the most serious security political situations since the end of the world, uh, Second World War. Russia is challenging the free world with its authoritarian domestic policy and aggressive foreign policy uh, uh, with its indefensible and illegal aggression towards Ukraine. Uh, Russia has violated uh, against peace in Europe, violated against international law and the security system. Uh, unfortunately, there are no signs that Russia is going to change its aggressive behavior. Uh, instead, it is using all uh, tools in it, its toolbox, uh, both political, diplomatic and economic tools and, and methods to reach its goals. Therefore, uh, in these dangerous times, security policy must, must reorient it to tackle the threats, risks and vulnerabilities that Sweden and Europe are facing. That's why we are going to bring Sweden to NATO hand in hand with Finland and establish ourselves as a strong and valued ally. I would like to emphasize that NATO is the core platform of uh, transatlantic cooperation on security and defense. It is one of NATO's assets that it brings Europeans and North Americans to the same table to discuss common, a common security agenda every day. Sweden will continue to promote an enhanced cooperation between EU and NATO, and this topic will also be taken up during the Swedish EU presidency 2023. We are going to participate in the EU's security and defense policy, and we will also take into consideration that Denmark has dropped its reservation and will uh, participate in this work in the future. Well, what can Sweden expect when our full membership starts, hopefully soon? 
it will involve a paradigm shift in the Swedish defense and security policy and the greatest change in our security policy in at least half a century. And NATO membership uh, concerns enti the entire society and all parts of our total defense when we become full members together with Finland. Not only are we going to complete the accession process together with Finland, but also we're going to strengthen the national defense, including total defense, and we will honor all our duties and uh, commitments as an ally uh, in NATO and uh, get systematically integrated into the various NATO structures. As soon as possible, uh, we will uh, meet the NATO target of two, uh, the NATO defense spending target of 2% of GDP uh, no later than 2026. We know that uh, most of the countries in our neighboring region, including Finland and the Baltic states, have already reached uh, 2% within NATO, 2% is increasingly being referred to as a floor, not a ceiling. And this will impact all our work. We share the uh, NATO's uh, 360 degree approach to security, meaning that we must be prepared in all directions for all kinds of threats and challenges. Our work in within NATO to fight against international terrorism and it is an integral part of this uh, and as an ally Sweden is going to contribute to the security of the whole alliance. Uh, for example, Sweden and Finland uh, are important factors in the Baltic Sea region and in the northern uh, north of Europe and we will uh, shoulder our responsibility for the security of these regions. This will grow in importance as we become full members of NATO. We will deepen and adjust, adapt our cooperation, interoperability between the countries and with NATO countries such as uh, Norway and Denmark will increase as Sweden and Finland become full members. We will be able to develop existing bilateral and trilateral and regional cooperation forms. For example, the Nordic Nordefco work is going to be developed and its structures will be reassessed. We will also look at how NATO membership is going to impact Nordic cooperation. Uh, we feel that it will strengthen Nord Nordic cooperation. Sweden is be going to become uh, the president of Nordefco in 2023, in other words, at the same time as uh, the uh, Swedish EU presidency is going to take place. Finally, I would like to say that, uh, or, or discuss uh, Sweden's contribution as a full ally in NATO. We fully support NATO's principle of uh, deterrence and traditional forces. This is uh, the cornerstone based on collective uh, defense and Article 5. S Sweden wants to contribute with new uh, capabilities, uh, including air policing, as well as the enhanced forward presence and standing NATO Maritime Group and standing NATO Mine Countermeasures Group. And we expect NATO membership to facilitate more deep going uh, defense cooperation. And I'm convinced that Finland's and Sweden's NATO membership will enhance all of our security, not only Finland's and Sweden's, but or all allies security and will contribute to promote peace in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Jonsson. Thank you, Minister Jonsson. We'll take questions immediately, but now we have Esa Pulkkinen. Lieutenant General from the Ministry of Defence. Thank you, Stefan. 
Hyvää huomenta. Uh, like was mentioned by Stefan Valli, uh, my minister was not able to come here this morning, but I do hope that I can replace him. I, at least I try to do my best. Uh, I shall now continue in Finnish. There's a saying, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Finland and Sweden are not in distress, though. But the war of aggression by Russia has certainly brought us closer to each other. We discuss in a very different situation about the defense cooperation between Finland and Sweden as during the previous HANA thing. During this year, we've met with our Swedish friends, we've discussed, we've coordinated, we've taken decisions important decisions using the same schedule as also for the NATO membership. The speed of this cooperation could perhaps be depicted by the fact that as a few years back we set ourselves objectives for the next five years until the year 2023. Very recently we could note together that the majority of these objectives have already been achieved. We've, for instance, agreed on exchanging air policing data and on arrangements regarding host nation support. In the field of cooperation for military exercises, we've also taken new steps. At the early autumn in the northern Finland, Sweden deployed the first time its forces to the uh, under the command of the Finnish army. We've increased contacts at all levels. For instance, we've had a seconded staff member of the Ministry of Defence during this autumn in the Ministry of Defence in Stockholm, Sweden. Usually at this situation, we'd put our heads together and we'd set ourselves new objectives. As the defence report of last year specifically says for Sweden that we'll set no limits in advance for deepening our cooperation, nor any restrictions. Imagination is the only limit for this planning phase. However, at this moment, we also have another ongoing project and we pay attention to that. And Minister Olson already, Minister Jonsson already said of quite a few words when raising the issue of NATO. The membership of NATO for Finland and Sweden really starts a new era for our bilateral cooperation too. We are not yet aware of what it may look like, but I'd like to outline a few elements to that. In future, we have to see Northern European defence as a whole, comprising the Nordic countries, the Baltic countries, the Baltic Sea region and the Arctic area. For this reason, we have had questions raised regarding the command structure or the NATO bases in Finland, which is not reasonable or not even possible to consider that as matters pertaining to Finland. We can, however, say already at this point that regarding this bigger picture, the cooperation of Finland and Sweden is an important part. Secondly, the nature of Nordic cooperation will change. Now we have various arrangements for tripartite and bipartite cooperation. And in addition to that, we also operate under Nordefco and its framework. I believe that in future, it would be more based on contents than structures. And more often than to date, a cooperation between the five countries within Nordefco. All in all, the meaning and significance of so-called operative cooperation will be focused in the Nordic framework too. And finally, the link of the Nordic cooperation to NATO will be strengthened. As it has been said here, the Nordic countries will not establish a block within NATO. 
And at the same time, the NATO-related matters also will be spoken in all Nordic meetings. It is reasonable to consider between neighboring countries how the collective objectives set in NATO will be implemented. And on the other hand, the pragmatic and practical Nordic cooperation could provide initiatives that are beneficial for others too. I am certain that the Nordic countries can, as a whole, bring a bigger added value to NATO and Europe as if considered it's their size. In the EU matters, we've already had experience to this, and in future we also have better preconditions for that, as Denmark lifted its reservation regarding the EU defence cooperation, as was mentioned before. The special position of Sweden as partner to Finland will still remain during the new era. Our new partners will also become more partners like Sweden in future, our new allies. By that I mean that amongst allies we can do things that so far have only been possible with Sweden, mostly. I do not think it is wrong to say that the continuously deepened cooperation in defence matters with Sweden has, for its part, prepared us to a change of culture that we are facing whilst joining NATO. Of course, our membership in NATO will open up totally new opportunities for our bilateral cooperation, and we are not able to yet imagine all of that. However, now it is not, not a time for new openings. Let us first take and terminate this joint matter hand in hand, as was just said by the Minister of Defence of Sweden earlier. Thank you, Urkinen, Secretary of State. Now we could have some questions and I'd like to ask a semi-private and official question here a year ago the membership in nato for sweden and finland was not yet a fruit that we'd like to pick and now we are all going towards nato as a members very unanimously with a very tragic background as russia is now violating human rights and the people of Ukraine is suffering. When did you personally understand that Finland and Sweden will apply for NATO membership? When did you understand that exactly that it would happen? Minister Hughes. We saw the situation change on the 17th of December as Mr. Lavrov proposed for a new agreement regarding the European security order where Finland and Sweden no longer would be having the right to choose their security path. And I would also limit our international security cooperation as when Russia has complained that Finland and Sweden should not join NATO but before such a binding agreement was not proposed that was really like staggering us as we against what we thought that we were proceeding to and the second decisive moment was the start of the war of aggression when we understood that Russia was ready to take greater political risks that nobody considered probable. That was the moment when we very quickly understood the need for full security guarantees, as there is a difference being a full member or not, as that has also been a pertinent question matter to Ukraine. I think these were the two points and personally I arrived to Helsinki two days after the war had started and I noticed that many things had changed. I believe that Finland who also is the bordering country to Russia also feels it even more concretely than us in Sweden. 
Esa. For, for translation. Uh, when I started my career 25 years uh, ago in, in the Ministry of Defense, I was, I was responsible for NATO. I was a so-called NATO disc officer. During that time, I thought that Finland's uh, membership in NATO may, may happen in two or three years. Unfortunately, I was not, not right. <laughs> then, I, then, I, then, I, then I lost, lost my hope. I thought that you know, this option is going to stay there forever. Forever. And uh, I, I, I couldn't believe that Finland could uh, send the application to, uh, to, um, to NATO when there's a bad weather. That's a reference to, to, to the war in Ukraine. Therefore, uh, my personal, let me say, uh, more positive view on, on, on Finnish possible membership in NATO and NATO appeared at the same time as it appeared in the public, public, public debate discussion uh, with the Finnish citizens and, of course, with, with, with the government. So I, I couldn't foresee it, uh, it uh, as early as, as um, Dr. Pentila did it already last year. But uh, life is full of surprises. Sometimes they are positive. In this case, this is positive. But unfortunately, I would say, uh, the, this happens during a time when, when uh, Ukrainians are, are, are suffering a lot, a lot. I mean, there's an open war against Russia, and, and that's really, sudden, really provides a kind of the duck shadow for the, for the Finnish membership and Swedish membership as well. Thank you. Thank you. Kiitos. Miska Taan on public frågas. En kort fråga till... Thank you. Then a brief question to Mr. Minister Jonsson. As Prime Minister Christensen is visiting Ankara today, a question of what we might expect from there and from that meeting. I do not wish to give an analysis to that before the meeting is over, but as Stefan Wallin, you know, our aim is to become full members as soon as possible. And that is an important question for Sweden. We do have strategic dialogue with Turkey and we do have the agreement between Finland, Sweden and Turkey. And we will hear the opinion of President Erdogan of this and we'll answer the, the questions posed as soon as possible. We wish to become members to NATO as soon as possible, indeed. Thank you. Then we could take questions from the audience. Hanna Oyanen from the city of Tampere, the University of Tampere. I'd like to ask the following question. How do you see the role of NATO in the Arctic areas now and in future? Thank you. Would Esa like to start? Thank you. We are so between Finland and Sweden. We are so polite us Finns and Swedes together. Indeed, I dare to say that Sweden has also realized that the Arctic is a very strategic region and Russia is of course present there. And similarly, the climate change is also having an impact on trade routes which also increases the presence of China there. So it has a strategic meaning and it, it will be increasing furthermore. To my understanding, Norway has been active in taking the Arctic's further into consideration in NATO and it, the whole of Nordics sees the Arctic's also as a strategic point as well as also the Baltic Sea region and we speak about it in the Nordics as a to collective defense political region. Uh, like you said um, the Arctic uh, as, an, as a region and, and, and of course the Baltic, Baltic region are, are tied so that they belong to in the big strategic picture in the same, same uh, let me say theater but having said that, I would say um, that 
if I look from Finnish point of view, um, the fact that we will become a member of NATO will require us to look uh, um, the Arctic from the uh, from the eyes or in the eyes of, of NATO, 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 NATO member. And of course, then certain concerns that not have been exclusively our own so far, perhaps more on NATO's or Norwegian side, uh, should be taken also also uh, uh, in the account uh, in our thinking. Thank you. It does with us number for August number four. What should go? Thank you. Other questions? Excellent discussion. Uh, Senzako is my name. I'm a Estonian ambassador. Good to see old friends at the stage. Um, uh, maybe a bit of a continuation uh, on 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 the same theme. Um, as I said previously, um, and now repeated in in a different wording, that uh, we uh, we have to look at the region more widely: uh, Arctic, uh, Nordic, Baltic, and the Baltic Sea region as as one strategic. Um, uh, area. Uh, uh, how do you both see actually what are the options of uh, of tackling uh, the, the, the issues in front of this wide region in the northern Europe? I mean, is there a role for Jeff in it, for example? Uh, do you see um, a chance for a amalgamation of um, uh, Nordefco and the Baltic Defence Corporation, which have been kind of grown in separately? Uh, but they're dealing in the same issue in terms of the countries joining together, uh, improving their uh, defense and security. Uh, and uh, or is there any other way of actually you're looking at but how to how to basically now put teeth and muscles to the idea that this is a one big strategic area? Thank you. Thank you. We'll start. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sven. For those who don't know, we, we were five-year colleagues with, uh, with Sven he, when he was a Estonian policy director, and we had quite a quite a close uh, close uh, cooperation with with we, with him uh, for many many years ago. Uh, I would say that, of course, the fact that uh, due to the Finnish and, and Swedish membership in, in NATO, uh, uh, NATO will get over one million square kilometer. Uh, land air and, and 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 ground for the for the area of operation that NATO NATO will operate. That will change many things quite dramatically here in, in high, north, high north. And it's it's quite early yet or still to 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 to, to make a clear assessment uh, what actually how we will 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 adapt to the situation in in a political sense. But uh, but there's a process ongoing now where actually uh, NATO is is uh, making an assessment how to how to integrate Finnish and Swedish um, defense into a broader NATO defense. And after that has been done, of course, we know how the expectations of NATO as an institution will have vis-a-vis -vis Finland and Sweden, and and then then we'll open up. The discussion how we could actually, uh, in in the broader sense, to 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 use the already existing existing frameworks like the Nordic Baltic cooperation. You mentioned a few words with Paul on on Nordic cooperation. That is that is that's already very well functioning format. Um, uh, that's for sure. But uh, but what's in my view is is also important to emphasize that. Uh, that's my personal view. <laughs> Uh, is that once Finland will and Sweden will become a members of NATO, we should not see exclusively uh, established a Nordic cluster. That's also my my experience uh, when working in in European Union. That we we need to do, look actually three three hundred and 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 sixty degrees, and also take into account of of, of other requirements NATO may have. Uh, of course, in this Nordic Baltic. Uh, area, but also also broader in in, in the whole euro uh, Atlantic area where NATO has a responsibility to contribute on defense. 
Swedish English or ska jag köra svenska eller you, cho- you choose. Okay. Well, uh, great seeing you again Sven. Uh, I realized today it was 22 years since for us for us to meet at the MOD when you were policy director as well. Uh, well, uh, just a few remarks then uh, I think this is going to be quite fluid. We're going to be using different institutions sometimes it's going to be Jeff sometimes it's going to be Nordefco sometimes it's going to be the trilateral cooperation that we have between Sweden, Finland and Norway. Uh, for one thing, I must say uh, that uh, the GF has been helpful for us uh, providing reassurance. Uh, uh, I, I know, for example, I very much appreciate also the UK having a bigger footprint in our part of the region. That's very much appreciated. Of course, what they're doing up in Estonia with their battle groups, we have the, the, the GF and we have the Northern group. I think that is great. Uh, and we're willing and able to work with the very many different different partners in, in this re- regard. Uh, I'm actually going to my first GEF meeting tomorrow and I'm, I'm excited about the strategic dialogue we're going to be having within the GEF. Just final note on that because sometimes this uh, bilateralism, trilateralism and so forth, what I want to stress is how much we appreciate all the reassurances that we have received after we became invitee by the United States, by the United Kingdom, Germany, France, the other Nordics also, that we will not be, be standing alone in case we would be exposed to an aggression. I think that has been pivotal for, for Sweden and Finland as well and we feel safer and of course we want to become full-fledged members of the alliance and then also enjoy the benefits of Article 5 and NATO's common bef- uh, defense planning. But we feel safer and more secure now than before we reach the invitee status. Thank you. Thank you. Now our schedule forces us to save our questions and comments for later. We thank Minister Jonsson and also State Secretary Pulkinen